Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we are back with a sponsored video today on behalf of Silicon Dust, the makers of the HD Home Run. If you don't know what an HD Home Run is, it's a little box that you put on your network and connect it up to a TV antenna. And what it does is it takes all of the over-the-air content that might be coming in from your favorite broadcasters and puts it on your network. And then just about any device with a screen can watch live TV. They have a DVR product that lets you record those shows. And they also support third-party applications like Plex and Channels and a number of other ones as well. And it's a really great platform for cutting the cord and getting free over-the-air television. And the other day they announced a Kickstarter for a new product called the Quattro 4K, uh, which is going to work with the new broadcast standard called ATSC 3.0. Among other things, it will bring in 4K HDR content free over the air once your local broadcasters start using it. And it'll also bring higher quality 1080p video over as well because it's using the HEVC uh, compression codec. Uh, so you're gonna get full frame video, not the interlay stuff anymore. Uh, coming in at up to 60 frames per second. It's going to look great. Uh, right now, broadcasters are using MPEG-2, uh, so you're going to basically go two generations ahead with the HEVC encoding uh, with ATSC 3.0. Uh, right now, there are not too many broadcasters doing this just yet, uh, but there's a great website here from the ATSC Association that will give you an idea as to when broadcasters will be spinning up. And these are the uh, current broadcasts that are going out at ATSC 3.0 right now around the country. Not too many. Uh, looks like Portland, Oregon, Boise, Idaho, Santa Barbara, California, Phoenix, Arizona, Dallas, Texas, and Orlando, Florida. Uh, but these ones here in light blue are starting up shortly, and then the ones in dark blue will be uh, rolling out over the next couple of months, hopefully. Uh, and my area here is one of the areas that will be getting this deployment. So if you are in an area where this is coming soon, uh, you might want to look at getting one of these tuners. And the Kickstarter is ending soon, uh, so if you want to get this over the summer, if you jump in now, you'll be the first to get it. And I want to bring on a special guest right now, Nick Kelsey, who's one of the founders of Silicon Dust. He's the guy that also makes all the hardware, and he's going to give us a quick demo uh, from his place in Phoenix, Arizona, as to how this device works, because he's got one of those ATSC broadcasters in his area, and he's going to pull in ATSC content. We're going to see what it looks like as best we can over a stream, uh, but also look at some of the things you can do with the data from those broadcasts too. Lots of cool stuff, so let's bring Nick on. And joining me now is Nick Kelsey from Silicon Dust, the makers of the HD Home Run. He's been hard at work getting this new product ready to go. We do right. have this running, and right now we're, we're streaming your desktop computer from Phoenix <laughs> to my house here in Connecticut. Uh, because I don't have an ATSC 3 broadcast available just yet, but you do have the Quattro 4K uh, running here on your network, and we're able to kind of browse through its interface. So immediately, of course, we see that we've got the Quattro 4K. Um, this obviously is a, I'm guessing, a pre-production model that, we, that we're looking at here? This is a um, production sample. So it's the actual finished product that uh, we'll be shipping. It's the sign-off um, to start the, uh, the main production. So this is pretty much close to final hardware. And if I click over to the channel lineup here, um, I'm seeing HEVC here, and these are over-the-air channels. And that's one of the big changes here, right, is, is the ability to use that, that better compression codec. Yes, yes. Point one, that is a 1080p60 channel. So this is better oh, than you get with HEVC1. Oh, interesting. So normally right now it's, it's 1080i, right? Um, so this is yeah. progressive 60 frames per second? Exactly. Yeah, it looks fantastic. And it looks a lot better than it would, I guess, right, on, on uh, a standard, standard content there. And obviously we're getting some regular HD channels as well. Um, let's go over to the tuner um, status here real quick and just take a look at what we've got. Now anyone who has used an HD home run tuner will be very familiar with this interface. And if I jump into tuner zero here, uh, we can see that we're on a CBS channel that we were just talking about. Uh, ATSC 3 here. Now, I guess the first two tuners here, Nick, are the ATSC 3 tuners. Is that right? That's right, yes. And then it's possible, and this is where it gets tricky, um, it's possible that you could have a bunch of networks using the same ATSC channel, uh, and in that circumstance, you could record four ATSC programs through the box if they're all on the same channel. Is that 
Is that a correct uh, statement? That's a correct statement. That's that's good. And then from there, um, if you had two different networks on two different ATSC channels, then you're limited to, to two. Because the first yes. two are the ATSC. Got it. And then the other two can just mm -hmm. tune regular HD content that you're yeah. used to used yeah. to tuning there. Very cool. You have two, so, physical, two physical ATSC three channels you can tune, and you can pick four programs off any combination of tuners. Uh, now, there was some other stuff you wanted to show me also here on the... Uh, the GUI application, is there anything else that people might be interested in there? Uh, sure, I can show the, the drop-down of uh, programs. If you tune a ATSC3 channel, it's mm -hmm. probably, if it's playing in the background, it uh, may already be tuned, so it's like tuner zero. There you go. And if you use the pull-down for program, uh, you'll see all the different uh, programs that are on this particular MUX. Oh, right here, okay, I see. Oh, okay, so this, this one channel has all of these things going on it right now. Yes, yeah, and these are all tests. Uh, well, this is a test broadcast which is retransmitting the main. Um, so for uh, CBS, Univision, PBS, it's re retransmitting the normal broadcast. Uh, and then there are some, uh, some test channels there as well. And then if we go over to your HD Home Run application that we're all familiar with, right now you're tuning this from. Uh, your local CBS affiliate. Hopefully, we don't get dinged for uh, <laughs> for carrying this at the moment. Uh, the app works on the principle of always providing the best possible experience. So uh, it's picking the 1080p60 channel, which is ATSC3, over the 1080i channel, which is the old MPEG2 broadcast. Um, so the it's um, in the name of simplicity, we we always do the best possible broadcast. And this would also carry through to the DVR side of it also, right? So if, if you had scheduled something to record on the DVR, it would pick the HEVC broadcast over the H.264 one. Exactly, yes. But it's pretty cool. Looks seems to work just like it does on the other stuff. And that, that's, I think, what people are looking for, right? It's just simplicity. <laughs> you plug it in, uh, it'll start working. Now, let me ask you this. If, if somebody has an existing HD home run tuner on their network, um, let's say they've got the original Quattro with its four tuners. Uh, if you get this device and you plug it in, um, it would just work along with the one you already have. Is that right? You're right, yes. Uh, so if you had a Quattro today, if you have a Quattro today, you add the Quattro 4K, now you have eight tuners on your network. Uh, so you can now record eight things at once. Uh, what can people expect from a shipping perspective? Is this thing in production? Is it almost ready to go? Yeah, it's just entering production now. For, this is the hardware production. For the unit itself, consumer unit itself, it's a mid-August delivery. The dev units, then they have early access at a uh, July uh, target delivery. Now, the Kickstarter folks are getting first dibs on this, but if you were to miss the Kickstarter, when do you think general consumer availability will happen on this? Uh, so, current target is uh, limited availability in September and um, uh, more complete availability in October. This is a um, uh, end of Q3, beginning of Q4, uh, where you'll start to see it on shelves. Now, Nick, there's some stuff that might be of interest to people that really want to dig into the protocol. So right now, you've got a, a Wireshark session running here. And, and I guess what I'm looking at right now is what? The, this is the raw data? Yes, yeah, this is the ALP level data. Um, if you have a look at the, uh, the frame or the, the stacking there, uh, you can see it has ATSC link layer protocol that's carrying IPv4, carrying UDP, and in this case, it's carrying route, route is carrying dash. And then I see these destination IP addresses are all different. So what, what is that? Yep. So each destination IP address, that's a different program, so a different sub-channel on the stream. Yeah, if, you, if you pick any of those numbers, so that you're, on, you're on dot 44 right now. If you scroll down a bit further, you should find another dot 44 uh, basically, every time there's a there's a packet for that subchannel, it'll have uh, dot thirty five dot forty four. Yeah. Oh, very neat. So, and you can really get into the protocol and see how it works, and then you can actually reassemble the data on here too. So, a little bit earlier, you were showing me that um, when you're when you're done when you're done with your capture, uh, one of the things you end up with is a tar file, right? So, this is the the contents of that file that um, it looks like we've extracted into this folder here. And what do you get? You get a manifest file. What's that all about? Yes, yeah, so the manifest, this is the same as OTT technology. Manifest file is a chunk of XML that describes how to play dash segments. So it tells you the file name format. 
uh, tells you the codec um, as you what's needed to play the uh, play the channel. Yep. What should we open uh, this with so we can look at it? Firefox is good. Okay, so we'll pull open Firefox. And this is all the and this gets sent out on a regular interval. Yes, yes. Uh, so this is part of the actual broadcast. Um, and yeah, you can see that this contains audio, it contains video. Um, codec is HVC, um, which is the HVC1, which is the way of saying HVC. Um, this is a, a what 60 frames per second, 1080 stream. Um, you can see initialization is a representation ID dash init on MP4, uh, and then a representation ID then number then the segment number MP4. So this is how to um, how to fetch the data segments. And then those segments are just what you would normally expect from a video file or an audio file, right? We get a bunch of video files here. We've got audio files, and then you can reassemble this into something playable. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So these, um, if you take the video segments, um, if you concatenate the init file with the, all the MP4 segments, you end up with an MP4 file, which is playable. We get this. Yep. Yeah. Now, of course, this. Yeah. Um, Raw data with that we dash. Captured. Yeah, this is a 30 second capture we did uh, a few minutes ago. Um, now, because it's dash format, the audio and the video are sent separately. So, it's separate files for audio and video. So, what you're playing there is the video reassembled. Uh, you need to remux it if you want to uh, put it together with the audio. And to do this, you need the developer version of the Kickstarter, right? So, this is not on the consumer version. It's, right. So you can get the uh, the consumer version will act as a Dash server, so that you can use any uh, any client that supports Dash uh, to play content. But to save it as a tar file, I have to get the low level ALP uh, PCAP. You can also do an IPv4 PCAP. Um, these kind of diagnostic features are all part of the dev unit. Very cool stuff. Well, I think a lot of people would like that, especially if they're trying to maybe build their own DVR software or build their own tuners. They can get all of the data that they may, they may need to learn how to uh, dive into this, this protocol there. And, and one of the things that I've always liked about your product is that although you have your own software, you're okay with people using Plex or Channels or some other uh, app to, to bring in over the air content. So it's, uh, I'm guessing that'll continue with the new product too? Yes, yeah, definitely. Uh, so one of the things we're doing to help that, because uh, this is a new, new format, it's now a uh, Dash MP4 format or an MMTP, um, MP4 format, um, which is something new and unique to ATSC3, uh, the home run unit will also output MPEG-TS, which is the classic encoding that's used with ATSC1, that's used with broadcasts around the world. Uh, so this way, any application that already supports broadcast TV should better support uh, ATSC3 uh, with just, as long as it supports the codecs, basically. Very cool. Well, Nick, I want to thank you for dropping in and showing me how this all works. And I'm, I'm excited about it. And I'm hoping at some point I can get an antenna big enough on my roof to actually pick up something over the air. <laughs> but I do have places I can go to test it out. So once uh, your, your, your units are ready and there's an ATSC broadcast near me, I'm hoping the New York market starts up soon. I've got a clear shot to Long Island at one of the places I can visit. So hopefully uh, we'll give it a good, a good run and, uh, and go from there. Uh, the Kickstarter is going to end very shortly. There are, there are hours left on the Kickstarter. It's just about over. So, and then after that, you've got to wait till the fall to, uh, to get in on it. So uh, we'll get this video up really quickly. So those of you who didn't know it was out there will know. Uh, and if you were thinking about it, well, you better do it quick, because uh, otherwise you're going to get uh, basically pushed back to the fall. Uh, those who do the Kickstarter should get it over the summer, and it uh, should be pretty exciting stuff to, uh, to go from there. So great. Nick, thank you very much for uh, joining us quickly here. We, we threw this together kind of at the last minute, but it was fun to just uh, get a quick look at the product, and uh, we were able to stream it from Phoenix, which is really cool. So uh, thanks again, and I'm sure we'll get you back on soon. Well, thanks. Thank you for the opportunity. So I want to thank Nick for coming on the show and giving us a nice demo of the new product, and to also thank Silicon Dust for supporting this channel for a very long period of time. They've been a longtime sponsor here. Uh, we've done CES trips and a lot of other cool stuff thanks to their support, and I just want to thank them for that. And we'll be back with more from them as things develop here. So until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, Rick Vestudo, 
Chris Allegretta. And Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.